we were talking a little bit before we started about how you never could have foresaw that you would wind up the, the subject of something like this when you first ate your, your initial hot dog, right? Never. It's, uh, I, I, you know, I always, when I grew up, I knew I was a big eater. Everybody in my family knew I was a big eater, but I never imagined that uh, it would be, I'd have a nemesis, a, a, a rivalry in uh, Kobayashi, and, and the, that's what the, 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 uh, the film's about. It's going to be about our, our, our rivalry and around the 4th of July. Yeah, it, it talks about that and Yuzhu being like the, the American hope against him and, and the, the storied history of competitive eating in, in Japan. Now, with him, was it more admiration or, or rivalry? It's a... When you're, when you're pushing your body that hard against somebody, and I was young, and I was uh, 21, I was going after him, and I, uh, I, I, it was a rivalry. I wasn't nice about it. Mm -hmm. I was there to beat him, and he, he was there to try to beat me, and we're pushing our bodies in, in weird ways. I mean, it's uncomfortable. So it, it, I, I'm not, he's not my friend, mm -hmm. it, but he, we're competitors, and I, I definitely, uh, I, I think we have to admire each other. How do you feel about him now? I, I, I miss him. And uh, it's uh, it's been a weird it's been a weird weird little journey. Uh, he he since he left Major League Eating, left the Fourth of July hot dog contest, and I uh, I missed the rivalry. You know, you, you talked about how this has been such a, a part of your life for, for so long, but you know you wouldn't think it's a little counterintuitive. It, the documentary focuses on how you were shy uh, initially. Yeah. You know how tough was that to to have to eat in front of people like that when you were self conscious about it. It was uh, it was it was. It was hard. I'm still shy, but uh, it, it's one of the things that, you know, if uh, you go out in public and you do this, you have to get over it. And I, uh, I've got over it a little bit, but I, it's, I still get nervous. It, it, I had to get over it in order to do what I loved, and I loved winning. And I feed off the energy of the crowd when the crowd is yelling, and if they're yelling, sometimes I hear, like, hear them gasp, and I hear them, hear them make weird sounds, like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I feed off it. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to give you something to really gasp at. The, the crowd cheers you on, but have, have you ever been heckled? or Are there ever people that are rooting against you? Every now and then, it's uh, it, it, there's people out there for Kobayashi or for, for Matt Stoney. There, there's some other eaters that have a real big following, and... Uh, and they have, no, they have no problem letting me know that I'm not their favorite. You talk about the, the rivalry and, and wanting to compete, uh, and there's some training footage in, in the film. It looks really tough. Do you ever worry about the, the toll that you've put on your body? Oh, I think every, everybody who pushes their body to a, a crazy limit worries about it. And I, uh, not, but I'm, I try to stay in tune with my body. I, I pay attention to it when, I, when I'm practicing too much, I'm gaining weight. When, I'm feeling fatigued for too long after a contest. That means I, I need a, more of a break, and I uh, and I, I try to find other ways to exercise. In, in the I think in the documentary it shows how I trained my jaw and my throat, and just try to simulate eating without actually eating. And I uh, I, I put in a lot of thought and, and a lot of time into figuring out how to push myself to new limits. How much research w went into that? Some of the, those training methods. Oh, I, I talked to a physical therapist. I wouldn't say it's not like a clinical research, but it, but it's a lot of trial and error, and a lot of it, if if it. If it sometimes if no pain no gain so if if, if it hurts and it, it it makes you uncomfortable it's probably doing something. When do you feel at your best? Oh, when I feel my best. Oh, it it, it I'll, hopefully I'll be my best uh, best Fourth of July. Uh, it's uh, I'll, I'll start training with hot dogs pretty soon. And I, I, it's a, a two day fast and when I'm nice and empty and loose. It's uh it, when I'm when I'm hungry and loose I'm dangerous. Have you ever injured yourself eating? I've been, uh, been a lip, I've been a finger, mm -hmm. but nothing really bad. Mm -hmm. I've been really lucky. Uh, every, every now and then I get some bad heartburn, but uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty all natural. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go into the details of what happens <laughs> about 15, 20 minutes after the contest. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you know, but it, it's obviously grueling as we were just talking about, and, and every year around the 4th of July it's, it's a big deal. Um, but there might be people who snicker at the idea of competitive eating being a sport. But there are other sports-adjacent things that I think people might snicker at as well. So I wanted to run through some. And you tell me whether um, competitive eating is more or less athletic than these activities, all, all right. right? Yeah. Esports. Esports? <sighs> more. More athletic than playing video games. More, well, yeah. <laughs> well, you don't get winded playing video games. It, it, we're out in the sun. It get, people get with the big guys. They get winded, and even if, if once you get winded, you can't eat. You can't swallow. Poker. Poker. Oh man, eating's more athletic than I, poker. I'm with you. Eating yeah. is more athletic than poker. All right, how about uh, chess? Chess. Same oh, as well, poker. Right? Well, it's. Well, we're, we're going purely for the mental mental side of these athletes. Um, yeah, I, I would, I'd say it's more more athletic. Pool, pool. Oh wow, 
That's that's a rough one because the the, the, the uh, there's not too many really overweight. The, the most most of them are pretty physically fit. I do some yoga maybe. Uh, that's a close one. That's a close. We'll one. We'll call it a tie. Yeah. Bowling. Bowling. Another close one, but I, I've seen some. I've seen some goofy looking bowlers who are. Or, uh, yeah. That that's another close one. You're saying you look more physically fit than most bowlers you see. All right. You know what? Uh, they got me. How uh, <laughs> <laughs> about curling? Curling. Uh, I don't know why those guys look so fit all the time, but they, they don't, it doesn't look like they need to be. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so but you're still giving the nod to curling and to curling, the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, NASCAR. NASCAR, all right, I, I know some race car drivers, and those guys are animals. They're, they're fit as heck. And finally, golf. Golf, all right, yeah. I, I know some golf, yeah, rip it and rip it. Those guys, those guys can swing it. All right, so, you, so uh, competitive eating is the line right below golf and, and NASCAR, grouped with curling and bowling and pool. Yeah, it, it's a... It's, it's, it's a different kind of athlete, and it, it, it's a primal thing. It, it, it's, it's as natural as running, competitive eating. It's, uh, and it, it goes back, it, it's, it's been around for a long time. It, like if aliens were to watch us, mm -hmm. and we would compare like our sports, competitive eating, football, baseball, running, competitive eating wouldn't look that weird. Yeah, it's hard to run after competitive eating. It would be very hard. <laughs> but you can find the whole story of competitive eating and Joey Chestnut in the new ESPN 30 for 30, The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry. Joey, appreciate your time. Thank you.